Hey there guys, quick update video today. I haven't posted in a bit. My day job has been crazy, so I don't have much time in the shop right now, but there has been a lot of progress on the back end, and I want to step through the process on what I've gone through over the last couple of weeks, some of the realizations, some of the experimentations, uh, failures, successes, and get your feedback. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Um, in front of us right now, I have kind of a progression of what's happened since I started the machine, started working on this project, starting with um, the first part I made on this machine, uh, which looks great on this side. Um, you can see some of the medium stuck in there, but on this side, I misaligned it, and it was a mess. Then I made a, another version. This actually came out great. Uh, very minor changes I'd like to make, and that's kind of what I was going off of for a while. And then the, it occurred to me that maybe we should try skeletonizing it. So we tried quite a few different ideas here. Uh, you can see the finish here is messed up because what I found was if you didn't clamp it right, um, it would vibrate inside of it. So I redid the soft jaws, had better support around the actual piece, had it closer together, and got this specimen. Um, you can see here, it looks a lot nicer. but. What I kept finding is that there was a misalignment. So if you look right, say a good light, right here. See that step? That's over here too. That is, and over here you can see there's a dart, there's a line there. That is the actual piece when you pinch it. Uh, I'll put it, I'll insert a clip here if I have it. Uh, it would cause just a slight shift. The vise would cause a shift in the part, and if you didn't clamp it right it would fly out. So I tried making the part again and tried various clamping pressures. This side turned out okay. But then when I went to this side and I, this is probably three or four attempts, you can see it's completely mangled because I kept launching it during the milling process. And it was at this time I, I sat down and I asked why I'm skeletonizing. And this has been brought up in the comments a lot, thanks everybody who's been commenting, but why skeletonize the part of the machine that isn't really flying around? Uh, there's really, really not a reason to reduce the weight back there. I mean, it looks cool, but I think, I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. We have to have a functional aluminum prototype first, and then we can start looking at optimization. So I went back to the drawing board, got rid of these, and that's where these come from. So this is a finished set of the AB motor mounts for the Voron 2.4. Uh, I'm extremely happy with how these turned out. I've been experimenting with tumbling them, so you can see the, the machine lines are very uh, soft, various uh, chamfering techniques uh, across all these. Um, they uh, fit together nicely. I've actually mounted the hardware in here and it all looks great. I can't wait to actually get installed the machine. So this is the, I believe this is the A side. This is the left side of the, the machine. And then this is the right side. This side I actually haven't covered at all uh, on the channel. And it actually, I did, I did all this, uh, the modification of the part, the programming, the soft jaws, which I'll show in a second here, and running the program in about a day. Uh, so I, the, the learning curve I think is gone. I've been very happy with how fast all this is, is, is moving. Um, you can see here, I actually modified the piece slightly so I can do it without in two offs instead of three. Uh, I'm curious how that's gonna work on the final piece, but all in all, super happy with it, and I've added that flashy Boron logo to all the pieces, uh, as well as some engraving there, but really happy with that. And then finally, uh, over here, put these over here. Uh, these are the uh, belt clamps. Uh, these are really fun to program and make. It's amazing how light they are. Uh, and these essentially will just go onto the, the parts right here to hold the, the belts in place. Uh, I've test fitted these, they seem fine. Uh, I'm not really sure there's an advantage to going aluminum for belt clamps, but you know, they took me about <laughs> five, 10 minutes to make. I'm not too, too worried about it. And then finally, I'll show you the soft jaws. So these are the final versions of the soft jaws that uh, we ended up making here. 
uh, pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, put a little clearance on the side, was able to hold it, you know, did a slow finish on these so they're really, you know, locked in and smooth. Um, nothing too fancy. One of the things I, I want to point out though uh, was on, let me pull the right one here. So here. So I was having issues with the, um, the little overhang here. So I designed these to hold it. And you can see it jumps out right there. It doesn't infect the radius there. And it really just did a really good job. It also let me get in there for a chamfer. I was super happy with how those turned out. And if there's more questions on like milling soft jaws, I'm not an expert on it in any means, but uh, I feel like I've learned a thing or two during the last few weeks of doing this. Uh, so that's that's the update on the actual Boron hardware. I am playing with uh, CarveSmart uh, jaws now. So I have, uh, these are the rip and grip jaws with my e-bikes. This lets me get really uh, a lot more uh, a lot less stock being wasted because of how I'm clamping, so really excited about these. It also lets me change into soft jaws quickly, so these will have to be redone uh, once I finalize the design. Um, but yeah, overall, making a ton of progress, uh, just learning the process you know, day by day, and uh, could not be you know happier with how these are turning out. I really want to get the rest of the parts made, then do a complete batch and send it out to some people for, for testing uh, to see if it really makes a difference. And then hopefully, you know, do some small batches for you guys. I, I've been getting a lot of requests and uh, feedback on that. Uh, I will, I want to show you the garage. We've been doing a lot of updates here. And then, uh, yeah, let's, let's jump over there. Okay, here is the garage. You can see we added quite a bit of stuff here. Uh, I'll start from this side. We got the big workbench. This is all gladiator stuff. We've been really impressed by how they set up their stuff. I mean, it's just been really easy to get these cabinets, you know, you slam them on the wall and you're done. Uh, sitting with those, those uh, I guess the, the grating there that we're hanging a bunch of stuff on. Uh, over here, you can see there's more of it next to some of our different you know, tooling here. This is all my kind of scrap aluminum. So you can see I got various sizes. Here's all all those blanks from the last project, you know, when I first started this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. I feel bad throwing it away, but really it's not very useful right now for me. So curious what your thoughts are. What, what do you guys do with uh, scrap st stock like that? Um, and here's some other, some other scrap. And then right here, that's stainless steel. I'm gonna be trying uh, some stainless steel here in a little bit. I got some of the tooling for that, really excited. Uh, over here. This is the uh, Packard Precision uh, Metal Cutting Bandsaw. It was actually made in uh, Glendale here in California, which it doesn't exist anymore, but it was probably made, I think the date was like 19 something, 1990 something, uh, maybe earlier. Let me see, I have the plate over here. 1983, uh, it still runs. It's a really solid little machine. The vice place placement sucks, but it cuts their aluminum like the job. Really happy with it. That, that's much better than the old uh, cutoff saw that I had that episode on right at the beginning. Uh, over here, of course, we got the machine. Uh, we also have a, a full bucket of chips that's been from the last like week or so of just trying this over and over again and got to dump that out probably dude, after this video. And then over here, a bunch more storage. This is a super nice tool chest that has you know, a lot of our you know, tools and various uh, pieces of equipment in here for uh, our projects and what we're doing. So excited about that. Got a cheapo uh, bench grinder here. Not very impressed by it, probably get something else. Any recommendations on polishing aluminum? I'm all ears, please let me know. Um, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the shop, up, shop update making progress, it's been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, so I will uh, keep you guys posted on any future developments, but that's the update for today and I'll see you guys next time.